Now moving on to other trailers that have been released this week. Uh, we've got the first real look into Zack Snyder's highly anticipated Man of Steel, the upcoming Superman film. Uh, Anthony, you're a huge comic book fan, but I understand you're really not that big of a Superman fan. How did, what did you get out of this? Um, you're correct, Ricky. I mean, I'm not a huge Superman fan. I love DC. I love, I love the strength. I'm more of a Batman universe, you know, Red Hood, Nightwing, uh, Red Robin. I love all those guys. But what I really am excited about is, is the reason I never really liked Superman. He's always this goody two-shoe golden boy he could do no wrong like he, he could throw planets the boy at scout the boy scout um which on, on the marvel side i really like captain america which is kind of the equivalent of that same you know truth justice that, in the american yeah, way righteousness the righteousness about it. but what i like to see here is is they're going a little bit darker you see just in the trailer they're like trying to uh, uh, superman's uncle or father adoptive father is, is no you gotta hide your powers they're not ready for it yet and you see this kind of coming of age of Superman having to hide that he's super yeah and you see that struggle and you also see I mean here on the poster you have him in cuffs you see a little bit darker side yeah. that he is his his coming of age tale so to speak so it seems that with Christopher Nolan producing uh, this film uh, he basing it off of a script written by David S. Goyer, who wrote uh, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, and I believe he wrote Batman Begins as well with Christopher Nolan. Um, it seems Christopher Nolan is bringing some of that more humanized, um, you know, in, in this world aesthetic to the Superman films. Uh, Aaron, you, you you being a fan of Christopher Nolan and of the Dark Knight, trilogy, uh, you, your take on what Christopher Nolan brings to the plate as the director, or no, as the producer, excuse me. If you just look at all the stuff that Chris Nolan does, it always has this sort of inner character confliction. Inception did it, the Dark Knight trilogy did it, Memento did it, this inner character like debating with themselves what they're, is what they're doing right, is what they're doing supposed to be what they're doing like there's the same with the prestige as well yeah the prestige yeah you know like they were never sure if they were making the right decisions in life and i think that you're going to see some of that in the in the new superman movie you know as as boyd was saying about his you know he's like no you have to hide that you're super and he's like well what was i supposed to do let him die you know he says that line in the trailer and you know the dad's like well maybe just to to protect yourself you you know have to yeah, you have to. Yeah. And I think it's going to be a big focus on the moral conflict of Superman. And I think that's a huge part of who Superman is. Because at any point in time, Superman can become a villain. And no one could stop him. It takes, it, it takes that <laughs> restraint, that, uh, that righteousness character, to keep him in that moral line of, you know, I'm here to help people and to be selfless. All right. And I think that's going to be a big part of this new movie. I, I, I completely agree. I believe Zack Snyder, having worked with Watchmen and 300, we're just going to ignore Sucker Punch altogether. Great concept, terrible I movie. Sucker Punch. Uh, I'm just going to ignore it altogether. Okay. I believe that I believe him, his hand, with Nolan's hand on top of it. Uh, I believe I believe they're going to guide that cast, and it's going to be a fantastic. It's going to be a fantastic film. Um, next up on the docket, uh, the trailer for, excuse me when I try to say this, Guillermo del Toro's Pacific Rim. I am absolutely horrible pronouncing his name. Um, his, his trailer for his upcoming film, Pacific Rim, which, as I take it, is a live-action Evangelion film. Aaron, you are the Evangelion expert. Why don't you lay a little insight into what you what you think about this trailer all right um i do really like evangelion you know it's classic anime late 80s early 90s i really enjoy it and in you know it seems to be the same sort of concept of using man-made monsters to fight threat enemy monsters and that's sort of what's going on but these seem to be a little bit more robotic you're not sure because in evangelion you know they're not just robots yeah so it seems to be, be combining giant mech anime with sort of the Evangelion plot line of preventing the apocalypse from happening. Uh, it's tying in a bunch of elements from 
a lot of Japanese inspiration at the same time. Even even sort of the artwork itself looks like it's uh, anime influenced. Um, I'm not sure what the name Pacific Rim stands for yet. They haven't hinted at all towards what the plot, other than that they're being attacked by aliens and they're fighting them, are supposed to be. Uh, overall, I think it's not completely a ripoff of Evangelion, though it pulls a lot of inspiration yeah. from it. One of the most interesting parts of the, this film to me is the casting and the lead casting of uh, Charlie Hunnam who most people as television fans would know as Jax from Sons of Anarchy. Um, Anthony, I know you've watched Sons of Anarchy as well, and you know he's, he's, a, terrific, he's a terrific actor. Um, but this is our first time seeing him in something really that's not a you know, down-to-earth drama. You know, seeing him as an actor in this film, what, what are your thoughts as, well as what he could bring to the role? Uh, I really like him as an actor. Um, Sons of Anarchy, great show. <laughs> Um, he he's very really, he's he's, a, he's a very good actor. Brings a lot of drama to it. He can he can do the action sh he can do the action scenes. He can uh, he can do the full range of emotions that you want to see from an actor. Yeah. I'm very interested to see um, him in this movie. The the movie itself, it, just getting it from the trailer, you do see a lot of of anime influence. I know at one point in time the robot you see his, his rocket fist coming from his elbow. That is, uh, um, if you've ever watched Big O, that is the, the robot's final move is he has a, a hammer fist that comes down with an extra projectile, and that is it. And a um, little tidbit that I did really enjoy from the trailer is yeah. if you listen closely, if you played any Portal of uh, the Portal video games, you hear the voice of Gladys. Gladys, And yeah. they're giving, giving the orders that the, the pilots are synced up, and I thought that was really neat. And it just added just a little extra bit that made me want to see it because I want to see... I just want to see what it's all about. The, yeah. the trailer did what it was meant to do. It, it made me curious, and I, I want to go see it. The next trailer I'd like to talk about, one that's come out of left field a little bit, uh, Tom Cruise's upcoming sci-fi film called Oblivion. Uh, it stars him and Morgan Freeman. Um, it's directed by Joseph Kosinski, who directed only one other film before this, which was Tron Legacy. Um... This was the first I'd seen of it, you know, outside of a poster and just kind of hearing, you know, tidbits left and right, really nothing of substance. Um, it's curious to see Tom Cruise going back to such a hard sci-fi. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe he's done one since probably Minority, Minority Report. Report. Um, your, your thoughts, guys, on Oblivion? I mean, I had no idea this movie was coming out. Uh, I, was, I was preparing to watch The Hobbit. The trailer came on. I was like... Because you see Tom Cruise, you see his, his action movie that's coming out, Jack Reacher, which is more of what we've seen for him lately. is, is action the Mission superstar. Impossible. Yeah, the action superstar, which unfortunately, due to the tragedy in Connecticut, has been postponed for its, from its premiere, uh, premiere uh, in honor of those, which I think is a very good yeah. move on Paramount's part. Um, but this Oblivion, like I'm a huge sci-fi fan, and it, it looks really good. Mm. The little uh, hover helicopters they have, uh, the graphics look great, and you see the story of it. Like it starts off, and it's like this is where the last Super Bowl was played, and it instantly gets you hooked. And, and you're like, "What is this? What kind of sci-fi movies? I've never heard of this." Mm. And then it just sucks you in. Then the next thing you know, he falls in like, a, lo a lighter shoots up, and it's like Morgan Freeman. Yeah. And, and you see all these big names, and you see this story where where something isn't quite right. Earth has been attacked. It's been decimated. We've kind of left it, and now we're coming back to kind of scan it. And you get almost a uh, 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 intense Wally -E feel to it. Yeah, it, it's it's really hard to find an original sci-fi film these days. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, yeah, like that was really what caught my eye about it is that it doesn't seem to be based on any existing movie franchise, any books or anything like that. So it's sort of like Inception. It's like it's it's this whole new movie that's not tied into anything and you don't really get that a lot nowadays everything's a throwback to a book or it's a throwback to a movie series a reboot rehash all that and this doesn't seem to be the case it seems to be a very original story um, Tom Cruise like you said he hasn't done sci-fi since like Minority Report I think I I really like Tom Cruise people don't like Tom Cruise but I think he's a really good actor uh, you know he gets out there and he can he can 
He's crazy, but he's a great actor. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's a, he's a he's great actor. Great. I enjoy most every movie he does. And I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to the aesthetic. The Morgan Freeman villain, maybe? Who knows? Well, we don't know. We don't yeah. know. Morgan Freeman, can he be a villain? Wanted. <laughs> Wanted. Wanted. <laughs> It's going gonna, it's gonna to be great to see that movie when it comes out. Uh, one more little interesting piece of information, going back to Joseph Kaczynski, the director of that, he will be returning to film Tron 3, uh, as will Garrett Hedlund. Uh, that, that, that will be coming out presumably sometime around 2015. Um, so, guys, we're going to close out. I want to just ask you guys a little question since the holidays are coming up. Uh, what's your favorite Christmas movie, Anthony? It's a Christmas story. <laughs> <laughs> you, I get this question. <laughs> <laughs> People ask all the time. If, if you look Ralphie. at me, if you've ever watched a Christmas story, I do look a lot like Ralphie. Especially when I was younger, I had the, I had the Red Ryder BB gun and everything. Did you have the pink rabbit suit? No. We, my grandmother buys me stuff every Christmas. And what's even worse is my birthday is December 21st. So hopefully the world won't end on my birthday Friday. Um, <laughs> but we do have this, this running joke because my mom went into labor while they were watching the movie. And my dad made her wait to the end before he took her to the hospital. Wow. Which it was, it was, it was almost over with. <laughs> but because of that, we always joke and say that I'm cursed to look like Ralphie for the rest of my life. <laughs> but no, my favorite Christmas movie, Wonderful Life. Wonderful life. That's a good choice. Aaron? Uh, just one of my favorite stories in general is uh, A Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens. So anytime I see it on television, I just enjoy watching that movie. Just, it's such a good story. I enjoy it so much. Or Home Alone 2. <laughs> if I had to say that I, I had a favorite Christmas movie, I would have to probably say National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I seem to feel like at times I live in the Griswold family. And on behalf of everybody else at Moon Beach Island, I'm Ricky Hedrick signing off. I love scotch and stay away from those damn limits. <laughs>